Welcome. On this episode of Church Art Explained, we'll cover the Apostle St. Paul. In art, from practically any era, St. Paul is really easy to identify by his long beard, usually pointed, and his receding hairline. Medieval portraits will almost always use a sword as one of his attributes, which we'll discuss shortly. And many of them continue to give him the book or the scroll usually seen in the earliest images. This stained glass image of St. Paul, which is located just inside of the doors of San Pedro, depicts him with a sword and likewise in gold, a scroll or a book. You'll notice the long pointy beard and the receding hairline, a classical representation of the Apostle St. Paul. Let's take a look at some of the more particular characteristics of St. Paul. Here we first ask, why a sword? You'll notice in almost all portrayals of St. Paul, he'll be carrying a sword in either his right or left hand. The earliest depiction of St. Paul carrying a sword was painted in about 1325 by Filippo de Memo. Depictions earlier than this date simply show St. Paul holding what appears to be a baton. You'll likewise notice in this image on his left are a copy of the sacred scriptures and the first, the letter to the Romans. As to why the sword is depicted with St. Paul, scholars agree that it is almost certainly due to the way in which he was martyred. Paul was beheaded in Rome around the year 64 AD, near the time of our patron, St. Peter. Only later do the words of St. Paul in the letter to the Ephesians begin to be applied as a reason for this depiction in artwork. In Ephesians, Chapter 6, verse 16, we hear, In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. As to why St. Paul is depicted with a horse, we need to first take a look at the conversion of St. Paul. In Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 4, we hear, On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You'll notice that nowhere there is a horse mentioned. In this image by the artist Caravaggio, St. Paul is depicted as of having fallen off of his horse. We need to keep in mind that Paul was a devout Jew, and, as Acts describes, this occurred at noonday. A devout Jew would have likely been erect on his feet and facing the sun during this time of prayer. However, the artist Caravaggio wasn't necessarily trying to portray an actual fact that St. Paul fell off a horse. Rather, he was depicting a powerful conversion of the man Saul who was called by God to preach the gospel. If we keep this in mind, the artist was true to what happened to Paul. He converted on the road to Damascus. Did Paul literally fall off of a horse? Most likely not, if it truly was noonday. Did Paul have a radical conversion and forever was his life changed as he followed Christ? Absolutely. And so with this in mind, the artist Caravaggio is true to the gospel depiction Paul was converted. Other attributes of St. Paul include a short stature due to some early apocryphal writings. Most importantly, his long pointy beard, receding hairline, and as noted, the sword and the scroll. If you remember two things about how to identify St. Paul, perhaps the most important are the book and scroll and the sword. The book or scroll is a reminder of the many letters which make up a large part of the New Testament, and the sword is a reminder of the means of his martyrdom. He was beheaded in Rome around 64 AD. Paul gave himself in the proclamation of the gospel. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Church Art Explained. Stay tuned next week when we begin to cover some more of the stained glass images located inside of San Pedro. God bless you.